Sunday school, and I'm going to get you to stand as we sing, turn in your hymnal 195. I'm sure it won't be on the screen. 195, look and live. I have a message from the Lord, hallelujah. Yeah, the message unto you I'll give. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now. message from above hallelujah I know it's true look and live my brother live look to Jesus now and live tis recorded in his word hallelujah it is only that you look and live life is offered unto you hallelujah eternal life thy soul shall have if you'll only look to him hallelujah look to Jesus who alone can save look and live my brother live Jesus now and live tis recorded in his word hallelujah it is only that you look and live I will tell you how I came hallelujah to Jesus when he made me whole twas believing on his name Hallelujah, I trusted and he saved my soul. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah, it is only that you look and live. seated. Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning out in the house of the Lord. Our Sunday school service hour. I'm going to have to steal the pen out of the visitor packet this morning because I left mine in my office. Amen. All right, well, let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Uh, we uh, have several to pray for. Uh, continue to remember Anna Davis. Uh, she has surgery uh, coming up here in May. Uh, continue to remember uh, Joseph. He's going to have surgery this week, I believe, Wednesday. And so uh, pray for Joseph and Stephanie, a lot of their needs. Uh, pray for my mom and dad. They're traveling this weekend, uh, if you would. Uh, pray for uh, Anthony Dishner. Continue to remember Anthony and Mary and Oscar and their family and uh, many others. Uh, Bonnie's home now. And uh, so we thank the Lord. Uh, uh, thank the Lord for that. So amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Does anybody have any others you want to mention this morning? Gwen. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. So Skylar, Reggie, remember this one? All right. I've seen some more hands back here. Uh, Sam? Okay, what's her name? Yvonne Wilson, okay. In intensive care. Let's remember these. Jean. Oh, okay. So let's remember Alexis Sheets in surgery in Charleston. All right. Brother Charles. 
Okay, let's remember Michael and Michelle Watson and their family. Andrea. Oh, no. So let's remember the Henderson family. Missy. Darlene Phillips. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Jeff. Okay. Karen Hunt. Sandy. Okay. Pray for Michael. Cruise tomorrow. Ask you remember my cousin Sammy Mathena this week, if you will. All right. Okay, let's pray for Aaron and Bryson. All right. Anybody else? All right, David, you have some? What was the last name? Uh, Roberta Stone, okay. Heart surgery. Wednesday. All right, anybody else? Tom. TJ, let's remember TJ. All right. And remember our lost people, amen? All right, let's remember this. Remember our bus ministry, our youth ministry, and all our school, everything uh, that we're trying to do, our visitation. Pray that God would continue to move. Oh, Lord. Sandy Purchase. Okay, let's remember Sandy. Okay, let's pray for Phyllis Bishop and Bobby. I was able to speak to her earlier in the week. She is said she's doing a little bit better, though, so, so we thank the Lord for that. Amen. Yeah, amen, amen. Debbie? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, Brother Sam mentioned Yvonne Wilson, but remember Jerry Wilson. What was the last one? Bland? Okay, so Connie Bland, okay. All right, well, let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father... Lord, we're thankful for this day, and Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for the beautiful sunshine you've given us and the joy in our heart, Lord, that we know Christ today. And Father, as we come to you, Father, we need your help. Uh, Lord, we need your strength today, and Lord, uh, uh, Lord, to just do the will of God and the work of God. And, and our Lord, it's going to be a busy day here today, so Lord, we ask for your strength and help and grace, dear Lord, and all that we have to do today. And uh, Lord, we pray for this week's and the weeks to come. Father, we need your direction and guidance and wisdom, O oh God. And uh, Lord, as we face uh, certain challenges and battles, dear Lord, we just pray that you'll give us wisdom, you'll fight the battles for us, give us the victory. Uh, we pray, and God, we pray, Lord, as uh, we're getting ready to go into our revival time, Lord, we pray for Dr. McMurray. Murphy will be here, Lord, that you'll uh, speak to him and help him, and Lord, as uh, we make preparations for, uh, Lord, all the uh, activities with our youth this summer, our Bible school, our mission trip, and, and our rise trip, and all these things, Lord, that we uh, work all year, they're coming up soon, so Lord, we pray that God and Julie give us, give us help, and uh, Lord, uh, the greatest desire is, Lord, that we reach our young people for Jesus Christ, and Lord, we pray for our bus ministry, God, you continue to bless in that, we thank God, Lord, where we're at with that, and uh, how it's growing, Lord, and we praise the the Lord for that, and, and so, Lord, we need some helpers and teachers, Lord. We pray that, Lord, you'll provide those, Lord, and those needs. Pray for our school. Uh, God, give us wisdom and direction there, Lord, what you'd have us to do, and, Father, we just need your help this week, and, and Lord, we pray for our many lost people, God. Uh, Lord, we just have uh, a lot of lost people, Father, we're praying for. Pray for Robert Rednick and Daryl Howerton, Lord, and uh, Lord, we're praying for Brother Rodney's family and, Lord, many others, Lord, and we know the, uh, the men went out knocking on some doors this week, and, Father, we pray, dear God, that, Lord, every track that was handed out, 
Uh, Lord, every word that was spoken, Father, would be, uh, Lord, uh, be done to the glory of God. So, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to just uh, save our people, Lord, and help us to be busy about the things of the Lord. We pray, uh, Lord, you'll just uh, meet with us in our services today. Lord, be at each Sunday school class they meet this morning. And, and Lord, as we gather around the Word of God in here today, God will give us wisdom and guidance, Lord. And, uh, Lord, you do the teaching and preaching this morning. And, Father, speak to every heart, meet every need today. And, uh, Lord, just help us to proclaim what you've put on our heart for this week. And, Lord, just pray pray that, uh, Lord, for these many that's on the prayer list this week, we pray, uh, dear Lord, for uh, uh, Connie uh, Bland, Lord, the need there mentioned this morning, and uh, Lord, Skylar Reggie, and the bad news that, Lord, it was uh, given there this week. So, God, we pray for her today, and uh, Lord, their family, Lord, we pray for uh, Anna Davis that has surgery coming up. Lord, we're asking, Lord, this be the last one she has to have on her hip. God, we pray that, uh, Lord, it, it just be fixed and corrected. Pray for Bonnie Chambers this morning. Uh, Lord, continue to help Bonnie. We're thankful Thankful she's home, but God continue to be with her and help her today. And Lord, we pray for uh, Lord for Jerry Wilson and Yvonne Wilson. Uh, Lord, that's in ICU this morning, Brother Sam's sister. God, we pray for her, Lord, that you touch her body and help her today. And uh, Lord, be with Dale and Rachel and Adelie as they travel this morning. God, we just pray that uh, God, you'll help them today, wherever they might be this morning. Uh, we pray for Alexis Sheets, Lord, that's in surgery right now in Charleston, Lord, in this accident. Father, we pray that, uh, God, you just intervene and you touch her body and help her, Lord, and uh, pray for Noah to continue to heal up and be better, Lord. We pray for him. Uh, Lord, we pray for Michael and Michelle Watson, Lord, their need this morning. God, you know what they need. So, Father, we pray that, uh, Lord, that you just uh, step into that situation, Lord, help them today. And Lord, we pray for the Henderson family, Lord, uh, lost these grandparents. God, we pray that, uh, Lord, we just ask that you'd help them today, and Lord, uh, comfort the bereaved family there, God, just give them the grace that only you can. We pray for Darlene Phillips this morning, and, and uh, Karen Hunt, Lord, in the need there today. And Lord, we pray for Michael Cruz tomorrow, Lord, and uh, Lord, uh, the situation that he's facing and dealing with, God, we pray, uh, Lord, you'll speak to Michael, Lord, just uh, help him, Lord, to do what's right. And uh, Lord, we pray for my cousin Sammy this morning, God, that you'll help Sammy, God, be with him today, and uh, Lord, be with my mom and dad as they travel back from my brothers today, and Lord, just be with them and be with... Uh, uh, Lord, Lori uh, Mays this morning, God, that Lord, she's uh, in a lot of pain, needing surgery coming up, so Lord, just be with her and pray for Jerry and Pam Ray today as they watch every week. God, we pray for them. Uh, Lord, we pray for Aaron and Bryson that's sick this morning. God, we just pray that you'd help them and uh, Lord, they'll feel better, dear Lord. And it's good to see Aaron's dad with us back today. Lord, good to have him here today and his mother. Lord, we just pray for them. God, a blessing on them. Uh, Lord, we pray for Roberta Stone this morning and uh, Lord, uh, and uh, having heart surgery this week. Lord, we Pray that, uh, Lord, everything will go well there. Uh, pray for TJ that uh, Brother Tommy's been witnessing to and working with. We pray for him this morning. And, Lord, all of our lost people, God, we pray, dear God, that you'd speak to their hearts, O oh God, and, and, Lord, bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, help us to be better witnesses, Lord, and help us to be faithful uh, in the things of the Lord. Uh, we pray for Sandy Furches, uh, Lord, this week, and Timmy, God, that you'll help them. And, uh, Lord, for Phyllis and Bobby Bishop, and, Lord, all the uh, problems they're having and the needs, Lord, that they have today. And, uh, Brother Bobby, have this CT scan. Lord, we pray for them. We're thankful that Phyllis is doing better. Uh, so we thank God for that. And Lord, just continue to bless and uh, Lord help. And uh, Lord, just pray for Sarah Smith. She's asked us to pray for this week and uh, was able to talk to her and Brother Virgil this week. Continue to pray for Brother Virgil, Lord, down in North Carolina. God, help him tonight and this morning. God, just be with him. And uh, Lord, many other people are sick in need of a touch of God. And Lord, we pray for Anthony Disher this morning. And uh, Lord, we pray for Mary and Oscar. God, that you be with him during this difficult time. God, we just pray that, uh, Lord, your grace should be given. And Lord, we don't want to leave anybody out. But, Father, in case we did, Lord, you know who they are. And, Father, you know the need already. So, Lord, we lift them up to you this morning. Lord, be our teacher, be our guide, be our help and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's look in Genesis chapter 3 this morning. Continuing in our Bible study in the book of Genesis for Sunday school. We'll read verses 9 and 10 for review this morning and pick up in verse number 11. It's kind of where we left off last week. We'll go back to verse number 8 to give the context this morning. Now, uh, remember, uh, Adam and Eve is sin. Uh, they've disobeyed the commandment of God. They tried to cover it up with fig leaves, uh, which represents religion. And, uh, and can I tell you this morning, religion can never take away our sin, uh, can never atone from, for sin, and so God didn't accept the fig leaves, Amen. 
And, uh, and God doesn't accept religion today. We'll see later if we get to it that far uh, over in verses 20, uh, uh, I think it's verses 22 through, uh, no, it's before that, uh, that, God, uh, that God clothed them in verse 21. Uh, and, and so an uh, innocent uh, sacrifice had to die to take the place of the guilty. And uh, we'll see Christ all in this. And so I hope you're seeing that uh, in these Old Testament uh, pictures and types of the Lord Jesus here uh, as sin has to be dealt with. As we said on uh, Wednesday, God does not overlook sin. He deals with sin, amen? And our sin, as we talk about uh, uh, the difference between persecution and wrath, now persecution comes against us from the world and from Satan, but the wrath of God, as God's child, you will never experience the wrath of God because Jesus bore your wrath on Calvary, amen? That's what we talked about. And so God doesn't overlook sin. Uh, that's why Jesus had to come to take our place. And uh, dear friend, if you die this morning without Christ, you will bear the wrath of God and you'll pay for your own sin. But how foolish is that to do that when Jesus has already paid the price? Amen. And so verse number 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. So remember, uh, this is uh, the first time we find them hiding from God. They're ashamed. Uh, they're in their sin. And so when the Lord shows up, uh, he exposes all of our sin, doesn't he? Uh, when we come into His presence, the Bible said as we come into the Word of God, it's the perfect law of liberty. It's like a mirror. God exposes us for what we really are. And so now in the presence of God, they try to hide themselves. They have uh, awakened their conscience that they've sinned against God. And uh, they try to atone and cover it up themselves. It doesn't work. Now they hide from God. In verse number 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And so remember, God already knew where they were. And every time that he asked a question, God is giving them an opportunity to make things right. And every time that God asks a question through the Bible, God is giving man an opportunity to come to the confession that God already knows what you've done. And so uh, he's given us that opportunity, just like he's given Adam the opportunity. Verse number 10 we read last week, and he said, I heard the voice of, uh, excuse me, the week before, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden... And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And so we see the first mention of fear in the Bible. It's connected to sin. And so uh, the Bible said perfect love casteth out fear. And so before Adam and Eve sinned, they had no reason to be afraid. Uh, they, didn't have, they didn't have to be afraid of the animals. They didn't have to be afraid of uh, God judging them. They were in perfect fellowship. They were in perfect communion with the Lord. But now that sin's entered into the equation, that changes all of that, doesn't it? And so it's changed now. Now let's look at verse number 11 this morning. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Again, God's asking another question. What's he doing? He's bringing them to a point of confession. And so he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And so is God seeking information no, God already knew what they did. God knew where they were when he said, Adam, where art thou? Uh, God already knew where he was, uh, and God already, uh, God already knows who told them uh, they were naked. Uh, their conscience had been awakened within them. And then now uh, it says, uh, uh, Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee thou should not eat? And so uh, God doesn't waste any time. He's getting right to the point, isn't he? And so uh, that's what the Word of God does, and uh, that's what the right teaching and preaching of the Word of God does. It brings conviction to us, and God gets to the point. Uh, you know, uh, God's not interested in us making excuses and hee-hawing around our sin and, and uh, trying to justify it. And friend, you won't justify your sin in front of God. Uh, he sees right through it, and uh, things that people put their stamp of approval on today, and uh, things that uh, people uh, justify in their lives that shouldn't be there, uh, friend, God's not interested in your answer, and God's not interested in your opinion or mine or our excuses. God knows the truth, doesn't he? And so we need to be on God's side and seek God's truth instead of justifying our sin. Amen? All right. And so he, uh, God asked them, have you eaten of the tree? And uh, so what's changed? You know, God, God knew everything was perfect, and, uh, but something had changed. Look in verse 12. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Now notice here, uh, instead of Adam coming to a full confession, he starts to play the blame game. 
Well, isn't that what our world tells us today? Isn't that what psychology tells us today? That all of our problems is the result of your circumstances and your sin and your problems in your life is somebody else's fault. It's not your own. But can I tell you this morning, God doesn't see things that way. God holds us all individually accountable for our sins. And so Adam, now notice here, this is a dangerous thing. Y'all forgive me, I've been in the mountains. And uh, I guess the pollen or whatever it is, this time of year is bad on me anyway. Uh, scratchy voice this morning. And so look what Adam says. And the man said, the woman, now notice, this is a very dangerous statement Adam makes here. The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and, and I did eat. And so who's Adam blaming? He's blaming God. He's blaming God. Adam says, Lord, the woman that you gave me, give me. So he's, he's blaming too. He's really blaming God and he's blaming his wife. And so he begins to play the blame game. Now notice it's a very serious thing here, accusation that Adam is making. But the Bible says in Romans 14, 10, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. God holds us individually accountable. And so notice here, Adam trying to say, well, Lord, it's the woman you gave me. Uh, this woman, uh, she's the one that led me into the sin. Now, did Eve make Adam do it? Now, Eve offered it to him, didn't she? But did he have to take it? No, you see, Eve, and the Bible tells us, we won't have time to get into all this today, but the Bible tells us that Eve was deceived, being the weaker vessel, but Adam went into it eyes wide open. Adam knew, because God, who, who did God give the commandment to in the beginning? He gave it to Adam before Eve was around. And who relayed God's commandment to his wife? It was Adam. And that's what God expects the man to be the spiritual head of the household and, and, and to do those things. But now Adam blames Eve and he blames God. And so the woman gave me and I did eat. And so uh, Adam didn't eat in ignorance. He knew exactly what he was doing. And uh, sin's a conscious choice. Verse 13, And the Lord God said unto the woman, and so now God deals with Adam first, doesn't he? And so God, God, God is a God of order. So notice the order here. God deals with Adam first. And so Adam plays the blame game. Now let's see what Eve does. And, and God now, uh, is God just going to deal with Adam or is he going to deal with Eve too? Because God holds us all individually accountable for what we do. And so we can't blame one another. We can't blame our husband or our wife uh, for sin in our own life. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And so now God asked Eve a question. Did he know the answer? Yes, he did. But God's given Eve the opportunity. You see, Adam done messed up his opportunity to make things right. Instead of just confessing, he says, Lord, the woman thou gavest me, uh, she gave me, and I did eat. Now the woman uh, says, uh, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And so who does Eve blame? The devil. She carries on the saying that we say today, the devil made me do it. That's where this started from, Amen. But does the devil make us sin? Does he tempt us to sin? Does he do everything in his power to try to get us into sin and make it as a Lord? Yes, he does. But listen, don't ever say the devil made me do anything. Because uh, God had given us... Now what God knows and what we know is God has given us all a free will. And what God gives us the liberty. Now here's the thing. Here's what kind of an amazing God that we had. God gives us a free will and he gives us the liberty to use it the way we want to. God doesn't make you do anything. And so when we sin, we exercise our free will in the wrong way and we consciously commit a sin. And so now Eve says, well, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And so uh, they gave a partial confession. They did uh, admit that they did eat anyway uh, of the tree, but they tried to blame somebody else for the problem. Uh, look in verse number 14. And now we see the curse here as we get into these uh, next few verses uh, does God overlook sin? Did God just say, well, I know you messed up. We're going to give you, uh, you know, another chance. We'll just start all over again. Well, God's going to give them another chance, but it's not going to be the easy way out like you and I would pick. Amen? In order for Adam to have a second chance, in order for Eve and mankind to have a second chance, now Jesus Christ is going to be have to brought into the equation to save mankind. Look in verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent... Now notice here... Uh, in the next few verses, God's going to pronounce a, a curse, and it's going to be fivefold. Now notice here, there's going to be a curse on the serpent. There's going to be a curse on Satan. There's going to be a curse on Eve. There's going to be a curse on Adam. 
and there's going to be a curse on the earth. And so there's five things here we're going to see that God pronounces a curse on. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Now, this serpent is this uh, animal that yielded its body to Satan. Now we know that Satan possessed it, and that's why Satan carries the form of the serpent all throughout the scriptures. And now notice this. God's first pronouncement is on this serpent. And, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And so we don't know, but this uh, verse kind of tends us to believe that maybe before the, uh, then the serpent didn't crawl around in the dust of the earth. But where do you find them now? You find them under the rocks and under the logs and in the dust. And, uh, uh, you know, and when you see one, it about scares you half to death, doesn't it? Amen. And so God pronounced a curse on this serpent. He's in the dust. He's on his belly. He's crawling around on the ground. Now, verse number 15, God pronounces a, a curse on Satan, the serpent. Okay? And now God says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now notice this. Notice a few things. God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Now that's important. Between thy seed and her seed. Not Adam's seed, but her seed. Adam's done messed up for the human race. And so one's going to have to come, born of a virgin, conceived of by God to come into this world, and to pay for the sacrifice and sin of all mankind. Amen? And that's going to be Christ. And so Genesis 3.15, if you don't know this already, mark it in your Bible, write it down. This is the first promise of a Redeemer and redemption in the Bible. So this is the first promise of redemption and a Redeemer in the Bible, speaking of Christ. And notice here, God pronounces uh, the judgment upon the serpent here. And so uh, between his seed, uh, between the serpent seed, and which is the wicked all mankind, and then uh, notice what it says, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So notice the pronoun he is there, speaking of Christ, the Messiah. And Jesus' heel was bruised at Calvary, but I'm glad Satan's head is destroyed, amen? And look in Revelation chapter 20, verse number 10. So we see the pronouncement of this curse on Satan, uh, we'll see the fulfillment of it in Revelation. Hold your place back in Genesis. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 10. I love this verse. If you hate the devil, you ought to love this verse. Revelation 20, 10. And the devil that deceived them. Now what did he do in Genesis chapter 3? He deceived them. What's he been doing every day since? He's deceiving men and women, isn't he? And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so notice here, let's look back at uh, Hebrews chapter 2. And so one day he's going to receive the final doom, but uh, the heel of the Messiah was uh, 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 struck there at Calvary, but uh, he struck Satan's head in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, exactly the way the Word of God said it. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, that you and I, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is who? The devil. And so for the wages of sin is death. Uh, uh, the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man. Now it's interesting to me, when, uh, as God pronounces these curses, uh, uh, that when we come over to Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12, Eve's not mentioned. It says, Wherefore, as by one what? Man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And so who does God hold uh, 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 of a higher accountability, Adam or Eve? He holds Adam. And because Adam fell, and, uh, and that's why Christ had to come, but I'm glad that Jesus came to bruise the head of the serpent and to destroy him that had the power of the death, that is the devil. And Jesus said, I am he that was alive and is dead, and I'm alive evermore, and I have the keys of hell and death. Amen. And so he conquered Satan. But this is the first prophetic mention of the Lord Jesus Christ that we find in the Scripture. And we find him here. That Now notice here, God doesn't overlook sin. And so now a Redeemer has to come. But I'm glad. Uh, did all this uh, take God by surprise? No. 
Remember, God knew when he planted the tree in the garden. God knew when he made Adam and Eve into the dust of the ground. God knew exactly what was going to happen. And the Bible said that Jesus is a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And so before God even spoke into existence on day number one, God had already devised and implemented and had the plan of salvation to redeem you and I. And we see that begin uh, to come into play here in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15. So God gave a promise. He gave a promise to the woman. Now, uh, let's look here. Uh, Did God fulfill his promise exactly the way he said? He said, between thy seed and her seed. Now, look, if if you will, this morning. We know these verses, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. How did Jesus come? Now, let me ask you a little bit of a trick question this morning. Why did God say here her seed instead of his seed? If Jesus had been born of Adam, what would have happened to you and I? Remember, the child has its father's blood, right? And so if Jesus would have been of Adam's seed, of his seed, you and I could not be saved. That's why he was conceived of the Holy Ghost and born of a virgin. That's why it's so important today that without apology, we believe in the virgin birth and the deity of Christ. Amen? Because that's the only way you and I can be saved. It's the seed of the woman. Look in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And the blood that flowed through Jesus' veins, it wasn't had any trace to Adam. Amen? It was from heaven. It was from God the Father. Is that eternal, holy, precious blood. And because that blood is shed, you and I can be saved. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stains. And aren't you glad for that? Look in Galatians chapter 4 this morning. Paul tells us about this. And so we see this first promise of a Redeemer and a Savior in Genesis 3.15. And we see it unfolding all throughout scriptures. And so every promise that we find about Jesus throughout the rest of the scriptures, it unfolds from this first uh, seed form of truth. And so we see that he's going to defeat Satan. He's going to be the seed of the woman. He's going to be the one that brings redemption and salvation to mankind. And that's so all throughout the rest of the scripture. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a what? A woman made under the law, exactly the way he said in Genesis 3.15, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And aren't you glad for that this morning? Amen. And so God uh, fulfilled this promise here of Genesis 3.15 that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent, but the serpent would bruise his heel. Now, uh, we're going to see here in this promise here, the bruising of Satan's head and the, the bruising of Christ's heel Uh, These really uh, deal with uh, both advents of Jesus Christ. Now, at the first advent of Jesus Christ, uh, when he came to this earth, Satan bruised his heel at Calvary, didn't he? Amen? But the second advent, the second coming of Jesus Christ, when Jesus comes back in Revelation chapter 19, and all of his glory at the end of that thousand-year reign, uh, Satan is going to be cast in the lake of fire. We read that. And so really here in this first verse here that we find of the Lord, we really find both of the advents mentioned here, both of his comings. The first coming when he came to Calvary, uh, Satan bruised his heel there. But finally, once for all forever, now we know that uh, Jesus defeated hell, sin, and death there at Calvary. But the final consummation of Satan's destruction, the final fulfillment of this promise given in Genesis 3.15 will be Revelation uh, 20 and verse 10 that we read uh, when he will be cast into the lake of fire forever. Amen? Now let's go on and look here this morning we've got a little bit of time here. Look in verse number 16. And so we see a pronouncing of a curse on the serpent, pronouncing of a curse on Satan. And really, Satan played right into God's trap right here. God knows exactly what he's doing. Now remember, Lucifer was cast out of heaven at what point we don't know. We don't know how long after uh, creation this event happened, but however long a time period it was, uh, we know that uh, God was uh, moving uh, in this direction. He knew what was going to happen, and uh, he was going to include the final uh, destruction of the devil uh, in this, and we ought to be glad this morning. Verse 16, and unto the woman, now, now he's going to talk to Eve, okay? And so notice the order uh, that he's going in, the serpent, Satan and now the woman, and that's the order that uh, we see these events happening. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. 
And in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and the, thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And so right now we see, even to this day, because of sin. Now, uh, d- does sin only affect ourselves? No, uh, ladies, uh, uh, the childbirth wasn't a very pleasant experience, was it? Well, you can thank, uh, thank Eve for that as part of the curse. Uh, that, 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 that's travailing. But listen, God took something even out of pain to bring something beautiful. Even though that lady goes through that uh, childbirth, that beautiful child that comes out on the other side, there's beauty in that, isn't it? And that's what God does in our life. Even though there's suffering and heartaches and trials, that through all of that travail uh, comes the, uh, uh, the glory one day. The suffering comes before the glory. But we see here that part of the curse was that sorrow uh, would be multiplied in her conception. And in sorrow would she bring forth children. And in agony and pain, you see, before, before the sin curse, it wouldn't have been like that. And so now we see here the, the first, uh, we'll see in chapter 4, the birth uh, of the first two um, of their children. And it'll be in sorrow because of sin. And then uh, now uh, there's, uh, God uh, institutes the order in the home here that, uh, that thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. And so uh, part, of that, uh, part of that being uh, part of uh, the curse upon Eve here. Uh, in childbirth and all those things that wouldn't have been that way otherwise. Now look in verses 17 through 19. As God pronounces a curse upon Adam and upon the earth. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife. Now, remember, that I think, I think God's throwing it back at Adam here. Who does Adam blame initially for the problem? Well, well Lord, this woman you gave me, she gave to me. But now look what the Lord says. And it says, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. And so God turns it back around on him, doesn't he? And hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. And so God said, In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, did Adam and Eve physically die that day that they ate of it? No, but they were introduced to death. That was never introduced before. Uh, you see, they would have lived, uh, lived on forever had they not sinned. But now because of sin, the Bible said, the wages of sin is death. And wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, because for all have sinned. And so now he says, And hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. And so we see here now that up until this point, uh, Adam had a purpose. Remember we said that God gave Adam a purpose to name the animals and to keep the garden, but he never had to plant anything. He never had to pluck up any weeds or uh, uh, deal with dandelions and all those things we're dealing with this time of the year. Uh, Adam didn't have to do all that. But now because of sin, the ground is cursed for his sake. And so in order to eat now, he's going to have to work, and by the sweat of his brow, the Bible's going to say here, now look in verse number 18, and thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. Now, before this time, there was no thorns and no thistles. Amen? And they didn't have to go buy Roundup, and didn't have to buy weed eaters and all those things because there wasn't any uh, there wasn't any weeds, there wasn't any thorns and thistles. And so, but now because of the curse, God cursed the ground. That's why the the earth uh, is like it is now. Uh, you know what happens when they go through and clear cut an area and cut all the timber out if they don't uh, sow it back or treat it back? What grows up? The thorns. Why? Because that seed's already in the ground. It's going to come up. And just like we said in your garden, you don't have to plant the weeds; they're already there. You've got to get rid of them. But now notice, this is interesting. This is part of the curse. The thorns represent the curse. And what kind of a crown did they put on Jesus' brow? It's a crown of thorns. And Jesus took upon him the sin curse. Amen? And by the sweat of his brow, and by the blood that dropped to the ground, he saved mankind. Amen. In verse number 19, And sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, until thou return to the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. At the end of the day, we're just old bodies made out of clay. Amen. And that's where we're going to uh, now return to. Now, 
uh, after this, now death is introduced now, and now we even see uh, up until this point, uh, we'll get uh, to it farther as uh, we get along through Genesis. Up until this point, all the animals were vegetarians. Man was vegetarians. God doesn't tell uh, no, uh, a man to eat meat until after the flood on the other side. And so uh, there wouldn't have been any death or destruction up until this point. But now, this is what we see the cruel cycles in nature of death and destruction and all these things have all come about as a result of this sin curse, not only on Adam but upon the earth as well. And he says, uh, From dust thou art, ta- uh, thou art, and dust thou shalt return. So let's look at the rest of the Bible and see if that's not so. Look at Job 34 and verse 15. Job chapter 34. Man put so much emphasis and effort to fix up the outside, but at the end of the day, he might as well go out here and make a mud pie and fix it up because that's what we are, aren't we? Y'all with me this morning? Job uh, 34 and verse 15. And all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto what? Unto dust, because that's what we are. Look in, uh, if you will, in Psalm 104, verse 29. Psalm 104 and verse 29. Now, had man not sinned, this wouldn't be so. But because man sinned, that's why we need a Savior. Let's look back in verse 27. These all wait on thee, Psalm 104, verse 27, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, that thou givest them, uh, they gather, thou openest thine hand, and they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, and they are troubled, and thou takest away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. So these men and these people that think that there's so much today, and these intellectuals that shake their fist in the face of God, who, who's the one, according to the Bible, that gives them the breath? It's God, and when God takes his hand away, they what? They die and return to death. They return to his nothing. Do you think uh, God is impressed by man? Do you think God is afraid of man? No, he's not. We're just but dust. But man thinks he's something, doesn't he? Look in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, come to this conclusion. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 20. All go to one place and all are of the what? Dust. And all turn to dust again. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what kind of house you live in or what kind of car you drive and what kind of education you have or, or, or maybe you lack all of those things. Listen, we're all going to die and return to the dust. Amen. And then look at one more, Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. And so did God say what he mean and mean what he say, says? That's exactly what he did back here in Genesis 3, 19. He said, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread until thou return to the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Now we're going to get into some different uh, things as we start next week and the end of chapter 3, maybe get into chapter 4 uh, some, but know this, sin has consequences. God doesn't overlook the consequences of sin. Sin has to be dealt with in the sight of God, but I'm glad. I'm glad for Genesis 3.15, aren't you? I'm glad that even though Adam and Eve sinned and they messed up and they did wrong in the sight of God, that God had already made provision before they messed up to get them out of the mess, amen? And because sin passed to the whole human race, we all experienced that death. But through Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we read it last week, as in Adam all die, but as in Christ all shall live, amen? And because of Jesus, because of our Redeemer, the one who took our place, and we'll see more of that in verse number 21, as God will slay that innocent animal to clothe their ungodliness and to atone for their sin through the blood. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the morning, for our study. We pray for the hour to come, God, that you'll bless us, lead us in truth. God, direct us and guide us, Lord, as we, uh, uh, Lord, proclaim the word of God today in Jesus' name. Amen. Men will pray.